say that piece took 20 hours, mm-hmm. right? I'm not, not going to make a whole lot per hour at that point. Mm-hmm. Not to mention the value of creativity and skill. So that's kind of where I get that word unpriceable, right? Like how does a piece that takes that long become priceable for the consumer, you know, the masses, the copy gerber, 100 bucks, right? Well, that piece probably took, probably took me eight hours to make. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's, it's different when, you know, if I didn't create the pattern, if I didn't create, if, let's, let's take a copy here for example, if I didn't do the, if I didn't do the pattern, if I didn't have to create a pencil, if I didn't have to measure the piece, do the math, figure out the geometry of that piece, mm-hmm. sure, I could make that in 30 minutes, and I could sell it for, you know, that under $50, price, $50 price point, but, I don't know, when you're adding all that work, it's, it's tough to, be in that same realm as you know your your coffee dripper without that pattern. So it sounds like to me, Kenny, that the important thing for you, I mean everybody likes money, that's fine, but the important <laughs> thing is that it gets out in the world. That something yeah. like that part of your art is to have it be experienced by someone else. Yeah, for sure. I think that when I'm making my work a lot of the times Instagram is a driver. Um, one of the reasons I started my Instagram account was to create accountability for me and to, you know, when you're documenting your own process, sometimes it's not that, for lack of a better term, it's not that sexy, you know, and you kind of feel like when you're there in person feeling the clay, you know, in the atmosphere of the studio and then you kind of like film it, you're like, man, that's not a very good video. <laughs> and so I, I think that when I'm making art vlogs, I'm like, how can I, how can I, recreate this experience for viewers as closely as how I'm experiencing it. And so that's really what I'm thinking about. Sometimes I'm not thinking about the final product or I'm not worried about if this doesn't work out. Um, again, for me, ceramics is an exploration of process. So uh, it's, yeah, to answer your question shortly, yeah, it's not about the money for me. Um, and I'm not making this stuff just to like enjoy myself. So yeah, it's, it's about about getting out there and having people experience it for themselves. I love that. Well, Kenny, we're going to go to our Mud Meets the Bat round, but before we do, we're going to get a quick word from our sponsor. When you think kills, you're probably thinking ceramics, but I know that there's a lot of people that listen to the Potter's Cast that aren't necessarily ceramic artists, but they love the stories that come through them. Well, listen, if you are an artist and you work with glass or you do flame working or you do glass blowing, then that's the place that you can turn to because they have everything for ceramic kilns to glass fusing kilns, flame working kilns, glass blowing kilns. I'm telling you what, if it's a kiln and it applies to your art, they probably have something that will work for you. So no matter whether you're a ceramicist or a glass artist, check out scut.com for your kiln. Did you know that art starts with clay. <laughs> Perhaps it does in our ceramic world, but that is an actual tab that is on the georgie.com website. And what's really cool about it is that when you click on that tab, art starts with clay, which happens to be under Georgie's clay glazes and tools tab, then you'll end up getting a drop down that gives you information on low fire clays and mid range clays, high fire clays, slip, you know, wet or dry, and then also all sorts of dry clay. The point is, if your art starts with clay, Georgie's has got what you need. So check them out at georgie.com, where art starts with clay. Kenny, now that we're in the mud meets bed right now, I want to talk about this idea of te- using technology as a tool. And first off, what do you say to those that say using technology is a shortcut for people who can't really do it. Um, well, I mean, at the end of the day, it takes skill to use technology. And I think that, um, you know, there's a mindset of, of not using technology because you don't want to use another tool to aid you in your work. Um, but I would argue that we use a lot of tools in our work, right? So um, we usually don't create we usually create tools to solve problems versus create problems in order to figure out what tools we need. And so it, it's helpful to use the tools at hand 
and, and if there's a learning curve to, to learn those tools, you know, don't be afraid of them because uh, you know, having to learn is not cheating. <laughs> um, <laughs> using technology can seemingly make things easier once you've mastered that technology. Um, but you know, like we all had to learn how to use the pottery wheel or other tools that we used to make our own pottery, like there was a learning curve there. And um, once we mastered it, we really appreciated that we know how to use it. We really appreciate that we have that tool. Mm -hmm. So I totally understand the mindset of, of using a tool um, to cheat <laughs> if 